Hi everyone, this is Greg here for, and welcome to Just A Meme Pod Podcast, where we chat about the future of making money on the web. Today, we have Adam joining us from gfam.live, where he's building the next version of Instagram by allowing creators to monetize their content in new and exciting ways. Welcome, Adam. Hi, Greg. Lovely, <laughs> lovely to be here. I'm pretty excited. Um, yeah, so jumping straight into the questions, uh, tell us a bit about yourself, like um, from the beginning, as it were, and uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll kind of take it from there. So, uh, so my name is Adam. Um, basically, I was in Australia for most of my life, uh, found that or like Australia is like super multicultural, like everyone is from everywhere. And I just kind of felt like I was like the most boring person in my like little friendship group. Um, and so my partner and I just decided like all our friends are having babies. So let's just explore the world. So now I've found myself in Oregon, uh, deep in the forest of Oregon in the U S on the West coast. And it's awesome. It's super cool. Uh, there's mountains everywhere. There's snow, just places. Uh, which is not something that Australia is famous for. Yeah, I was going to um, say, have and, you been yeah, skiing yeah. a I lot? Mean, they're, or... <laughs> they're really good at beaches, terrible at snow mountains. Um, so yeah, so kind of exploring the world. Um, and that whole transition has kind of led me into the crypto space because I've had to deal with banks. And I'm not sure if you met banks and they provide a great service, but sometimes they suck so hard. Sometimes so, they provide yeah, a like, great service. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Especially Sometimes for international they lock people. You in a box. <laughs> yeah. Right, 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 right. So um, that, so that yeah. led to you finding, uh, what was it? Yeah, kind of when, when was this that you moved and when did it all kind of yeah, so come together moved, for crypto? We moved about five, <laughs> yeah, we moved about five years ago. And, um, you know, like actually, like America was probably the easiest from a, from a visa point of view. So we were able mm. to like get jobs in the US and then start working. That was all great. But it kind of really did highlight just how uh, systems that have been computerized don't work with edge cases very well. So we just found ourselves like in all these different edge cases where like, you know, for, like you might have heard that the US has like a credit system or a credit score. Yep. And so if you don't have a credit score, you can't do anything. You can't get a mobile phone. You can't rent an apartment. Like there's so many things you cannot do. Mm. Um, and, you know, we came from Australia, we owned property in Australia, like we had responsible like credit usage and all that sort of stuff. But because the US couldn't see Australia in that way, they did not care. And so suddenly, like, we couldn't get a mobile phone. Um, like they didn't have a little box because we didn't have a driver's license in the state that we're in. And just all those kind of crazy things. Um, like, it, it kind of just, it made me realize just how siloed everything is. Yeah. And then trying to transfer money from Australia to the US was nightmarish. It was so, so hard because it was my money in Australia. And yet the Australian banks wouldn't let me take it uh, to do with what I wanted because it didn't kind of fit their normal use cases. Mm. So, you know, like we, like I remember spending like almost like nine or 10 hours on the phone with banks in Australia trying to get my money to me in America um, they suggested that I just like, oh, we just need you to fly back to Australia to fill out this form. And then we can, you know, give you the money. It's like, I'm not flying for 15 hours to fill out a form. Like this is the digital age. I should just be able to sign something here. So that's kind of made me like, uh, think about, you know, there must be a better way. And that's yeah. kind of how I found the crypto space. Um, oh, cool. And when, yeah, uh, so when about was that, was that pre COVID? Cause I know a lot of things have kind of been flipped on their head i mean in my in my work yeah, we've seen loads was, of people going through digital transformation so yeah it was it well, before it was that kind of kicked off like, it was kind of september 2017 like just before everything went completely nuts and like bitcoin was at like 20 grand or whatever like yeah, so yeah. like that you know that hype kind of helped me find the space um and so like you know i was basically in too late to be an investor like and i kind of hate that that kind of view of people like in crypto just to make money, like they bought it low and they want to sell it high. Like, I don't care about that. I care about, you know, being able to send you value in three seconds. Um, and it was kind of like, it was funny that like my partner and I were in the same room and I had to give her money to help her pay our rent. Um, and it was quicker for us to essentially drive to the ATM, me pull out the money, physically give it to her, her take it into the bank to deposit then, um, but I could like, I could pay someone in Venezuela, like 
in three seconds. Oh. And that's kind of made me realize like, you know, there's better ways. Uh, and that's when I went down like the decentralization path and like trustless systems. And I've lo learned a lot about like the financial sector purely through playing with crypto. Uh, so yeah, it's been a great little uh, journey so far. And now I'm building stuff. So that's exciting. Yeah, no, great. Yeah, so 2017 was, uh, it's funny you should mention that. Uh, earlier, I was looking at my uh, Litecoin holdings. Oh, um, yes. <laughs> in, the, in the beginning, I, I didn't believe in Bitcoin, so I bought into Litecoin. And yep. I noticed that I moved it last on the 27th of December 2017, and it was worth something like two grand or something. And now it's 650, and I was just a bit <laughs> kind of sad for a moment. But, you know, all good things come to those who wait. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. One day we'll be and, back there. <laughs> right. And honestly, like, even if we're not, that's kind of fine. Like, you yeah. know, like as long as we can like use it and we can help people with it and we can build a better system that isn't completely gated, then, yeah. you know, like we might not be millionaires, but the world is better for it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we've, we've mentioned a couple of times that you're building stuff. What, what are you currently working on? Uh, well, I'm working on gfound.live, uh, which you mentioned, mentioned at the top. Yep. Uh, and essentially this is a website that. I've built um, and really like uh, it is similar to Instagram, but it's it's yep. really more for people to tell a story. So the whole purpose is not necessarily to share photos, but to tell a story. Um, one of the things I'm really worried about um, is automation wiping out a ton of uh, industries. Uh, you know, we've seen it um, in uh, like the shopping space, the retail space. We'll see it in transportation very soon. Yeah. We've seen it in manufacturing. Like there's whole towns in the US, there's a whole middle of the country that's kind of being wiped out uh, in terms of like those type of jobs. So I've been thinking about like, what is something that isn't going to be wiped out? And I think like storytelling and sharing, like that is how people have transferred information from one generation to another is through telling stories. Mm. It's something that we are really excited about we love hearing stories we love getting messages from them so i kind of wanted to build this storytelling application but i personally don't love advertisements i kind of hate it how like in youtube videos or podcasts um people have to like thank their sponsors and then talk about their sponsor for like 30 minutes or yeah. like youtube is almost unwatchable these days because there's like 17 ad breaks um and, you know, like you can be demonetized because you're not advertiser friendly, all of that sort of stuff. So yeah. I'm trying to build a platform that doesn't worry about any of that, where people can, uh, you know, post, post a story, add a picture, kind of share their journey of whatever it is that they're excited about, and then can either be paid through Coil subscribers viewing their content yep. and or getting tipped in XRP. Uh, and eventually we'd like to, to add more currency to that. But yeah, it's basically, you can get tipped by the people who care about you, not uh, paid by a product that no one cares about. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so um, yeah, so how, how does this, um, you mentioned the different ways to monetize it. Uh, we we yep. met through the Grant for the Web project. Is that, yeah. is GFAM Live like the kind of basis of your Grant for the Web project at the moment? And, you know, yeah, it is, is that so what you're building on, yeah. Yeah, so basically I had already started building it and essentially used like, I'm, like I'm not a coder. So I've gotten, I've pulled people in yeah. um, and you know, I had to spend some of my own savings to build this thing up because I'm just excited about it. It's the kind of thing that I've had in my head for a little bit. Um, I just want to see it realized. Yeah. Um, and then it kind of fit very nicely. Like I was actually originally going to build this so that advertisers would, you know, advertise at the top and the person who created the content would directly get the money from the advertisers and the platform would take nothing. Okay. Um, and then kind of found out about Grant for the Web and was like, oh, that is way better. So changed, like pivoted and basically made it no advertisers and just um, working directly with readers and then content consumers. So yeah, so someone, if I spend time, I'm a Coil subscriber, I pay the $5 a month. And um, it means that if I spend time on someone's content, then they get the micro transactions from my subscription. So like, that's really exciting to me. If someone has a huge following, then they could make like so much money if everyone's a subscriber. Yeah. Uh, and it's still very early days. I put, um, I put out a six month like uh, project report, like on our little blog. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, it is, 
has only been six months. Um, the grant for the web is giving us the opportunity to build more into it and move the infrastructure into the cloud so that we can scale, but yeah. also I'm spending a ton of money on marketing. So okay. actually getting like trying to advertise to people, content creators on like the Instagrams or the TikToks or whatever yeah. to, um, to basically hopefully show them a better way. Uh, and talking to these marketing firms, like they're like, oh, really to get traction on TikTok, you need to like, you know, post 15 times a day. Yeah. And straight away, I'm like, I'm not doing that. There's no way I'm doing that. You know, like, like to, to work with the algorithms, you need to put it, like you need to interact with the platform so much. And for GFAM, you don't have to do that. You can just post once a day or whatever. And if you have people that care about you, then you'll get paid. Yeah. Um, so so yeah. How, how do you let people monetize at the moment? Is it, I think you said it was a mixture of two different ways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So basically, um, if if you're in the in the coil.com ecosystem, yep. where you know ba basically uh, as a subscriber, you can spend five dollars a month for Coil, and you get access to like coil.com and Cinnamon Video and Inger and like a, a bunch of other things, yeah, uh, including gfam.live. So um, if you are a Coil creator, then if you create content on gfam a Coil subscriber, if they look at your content, then you get paid for the time that they spend on your content. So they could be writing you comments or they could just be reading your story. Yeah. Um, so that's one way someone can get paid. And then the other way is they can receive tips in XRP. Okay, so, yeah, great. Um, what that means is I can tip someone and within three seconds, like they've got that money ready for them to do with whatever, um, which is kind of, it sounds normal, but it's actually incredible technology because if you think about like the PayPal's or whatever, like mm. they charge, like they charge fees, they charge, ex like they have their own exchange rate, which is sometimes yeah. not quite really related to the actual exchange rate. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they kind of, what they're really doing is they're, if I pay you with PayPal, like you don't get the money straight away. You kind of do, but really they have to go through and they have to work out they have to get the money from my account. They have to put in their account. Then they have to put the money in your account. And your bank has to trust that PayPal is doing that, all that sort of stuff. So it looks like you've got the money straight away, but you actually don't. It might yeah. take four business days until you can actually use your money. Where on gfam.live, three seconds. Three seconds, oh. you can spend it however you want. I think that's really the, the power of kind of crypto networks, blockchain in general. Yeah. Like it's yeah. just speed. <laughs> yeah, speed yeah. internationally is. Uh, it's this global society that I think progressive progressively we're getting towards and it's definitely a part of that. So yeah. yeah it's and really like exciting. on, on, G, on gfam.live, like it doesn't matter where the, these content creators are. We have some in Nicaragua, we have some in the UK, like we have America, Australia, Italy, the Netherlands. Mm. And honestly, like I don't even know where some of these people are. It doesn't matter. They just receive it in their account regardless of where they are. Yeah. And that's kind of amazing. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what, yeah, what, what is the kind of grand vision for the product? Um, are you going to replace Instagram, Snapchat and all the, the big boys? Or are you kind oh of thinking you work alongside them and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just another place um, to monetize. It's options, isn't it? I suppose. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I mean, this thing is never going to replace Instagram. Instagram makes billions of dollars. You know, it's, it, we're not going to replace advertising, but one thing I would like to do is actually, change kind of the culture so yeah. at the moment people are used to consuming content for free yep. but it's not actually for free they're getting advertised to they're being influenced um their data is being mined like it all seems for free but like under the surface it's really not where for something like gfam.live like you can pay one xrp and that's like i don't know 60 cents or whatever or you can pay like a penny like you can choose what you want to pay um, and so we kind of need to get used to paying or encouraging content creators to make the content that, that they're, you know, that we're excited about. Yeah. Um, but the grand vision is to maybe even get brands and advertisers in on GFAM and yeah. change it so that instead of advertising to us, they're rewarding their customers. So yeah. with this kind of thing, like, you know, they might spend a hundred dollars on creating an ad or they could spend $100 on rewarding us for wearing their product or using their product or speaking about their product. And they could reward 100 people instead. Yeah. So, you know, like it's basically 
what do you call it? Like micro motivating instead of advertising. So maybe that's a better relationship for advertisers or brands. So yeah, I don't know. Like, honestly, I don't know what the grand vision is. It's just like, we're just building a thing and hopefully it works. And if it doesn't, that's fine as well. If it helps someone build something better, yeah. that's great. You know, like I, I don't, this isn't my main job. Uh, it's kind of a, you know, a bit of a, a side project. Yeah. If it fails, that's completely fine. But if I can change the world, that's amazing. So, you know, like whatever, whatever it turns out to be, I'll be happy. Yeah, I think that's one of the things I love about this community in particular, Grant for the Web. Um, they, they, they say it in the thing, like we just want people doing stuff with this. And, it, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter if you fail or win. We're here to support you kind of in whichever way. And I, I just it's, love that I've, attitude. Yeah, <laughs> I've never received a grant before. I don't really understand them. Like yeah. to basically receive money to try something is amazing. You know, yeah. it's incredible. So, yeah, I'm really like, I can't believe Grant for the Web exists. I love that it does. Um, I'm just really excited to see what comes out of it. You know, yeah. Um, I, think, and, I think looking at some of the projects, amazing stuff's happening. So right, definitely stay right, tuned. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, and if we can, like, you know, there's so much benefit to like web monetization. Like, I personally think like misinformation is mankind's biggest issue at the moment. Like, we can't solve anything else if we can't even agree on what the truth is. Yeah. Or what the bare facts are you know so i see web monetization as a way to kind of get rid of like the clickbaits and the advertiser driven content and misinformation and all that sort of stuff like we know misinformation clicks really well right yeah. so that's not a great model for the internet um the whole thing of like misinformation spreads six times faster six times faster than the truth like yeah. they want emotive things but that doesn't help us. So, you know, I see web monetization as a way to uh, maybe get rid of misinformation or like maybe dilute its power a little bit so that people, you know, we get away from a clickbait and we get more into like a deep dive because you get paid for the time that people spend on your content. Yeah. So if it's longer content, you get paid more. So, you know, like I, I think it'll help transform the internet, hopefully into a better place. Yeah. No. And that, yeah, I think that's, that's the goal, isn't it? At the end of yeah. the day, make yeah, it more healthy, so. make it better. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds, sounds amazing. Um, so yeah, so uh, kind of final question wrapping up, uh, what's your favorite other crypto projects like outside of grant for the web or webmon? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, like, I initially like, you know, found like the Bitcoins and the Ethereums and all that sort of stuff. Uh, Litecoin, I was, you know, excited about Litecoin at the start. Um, but one of the things I found was the Hive blockchain, which it's kind of confusing because there's kind of two Hive blockchains, but basically Hive, so Hive.io, um, came from the Steam blockchain. So the Steam blockchain was like a social media blockchain uh, where you could like post content and you would basically, they'd create value every day and then distribute that as rewards to its users based on like how popular how much the content was voted. Um, but Steam was heavily centralized. And then uh, Justin Sun from Tron, he purchased Steam. Um, right. And basically the whole community was like, no, nah, we're not standing for this. So the whole community moved and built the Hive blockchain. So the Hive blockchain is truly decentralized. There's no boss of it. It's just a bunch of groups and different witnesses and different people and individuals and companies all building this community and this blockchain. And then there's like heaps of other like apps and stuff connected to it. So there's a game called Splinterlands where you have like, it's like a, you know, um, like a Hearthstone type card game, yeah. but you own the cards, they sit on the Hive blockchain. Um, so it's like NFTs and stuff, or there's like, a video thing so you post a video and then people vote on that or you know there's lots of different games and stuff and people can build whatever they want on the hive blockchain and that's amazing so yeah i really like that um it is annoying in that it is based on like popularity of posts so you might write an, an amazing post yeah um and if the right people don't see it at the right time then it doesn't go anywhere but uh that does encourage like um, you know, interaction and people like chatting to each other and stuff. And you get, you get paid for your comments. If you write a really nice comment, 
you might get more upvotes than if like, you know, on your normal post. So yeah. it means that people are kind of really nice and really supportive. So yeah, I just, I like the Hive blockchain. I haven't really spent that much time on it lately, but I think it might always be in my life because it's a, it's a lovely place to hang out. Yeah, no, I've not, I've not got involved there, but it definitely sounds like um, it's worth checking out uh, and yeah. see, see what those guys are doing. I just love the breadth and a kind of uh, width of the communities that we're kind of seeing pop up around the blockchain ecosystem. Loads of people trying to do really great progressive things. Um, and yeah, it's just it's just great to hear about all of them. It's so hard to keep up with them as well because there's, oh, there's just so, so many. Much. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, it is frustrating that it has been like the ICO boom, like, you know, and people lost a ton of money and then like the DeFi boom and people lost a ton of money with that. But like, <laughs> like if you take those things out, there's yeah. incredible people building incredible things just to build. And yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. Okay. No, brilliant. Um, yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> brilliant chat. Thanks for uh, kind of joining us today. Um, thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so <laughs> thanks for tuning in everyone uh, to Just a Meme podcast, where we talk about the future of making money on the web. Please do get involved. Uh, give us a like, send us some comments, a review, and please also subscribe and ch to check out the next uh, s session where we talk to a whole range of interesting people like Adam here. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs>